Hello and welcome to Nobody Meets Somebody, the podcast where two comedians who are currently nobody meet somebody who is famous. My name is Mary Picarazzi. And I'm Tanmi Darora. In today's episode, we got to talk with Eric O'Keefe, the host and producer of a great kids podcast called What If World, the podcast where kids submit far out questions like what if ballerinas met with dinosaurs and he turns them into an entire story with captivating and memorable characters. I love this podcast and it is absolutely a great way for kids to use their imagination. So I am super thrilled we did this episode, Tanvir. Thank you. So let's dive into it. Let's talk to Eric. Hi, and welcome. How are you, Eric? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. Yes, Tanvir and I are super excited to get this party started. Uh, We know you have a fantastic podcast called What If Worlds, which gives kids a great chance to use their imagination. Uh, When did you get started with it? Uh, We just started our fifth season. So, uh, you know, a little over four years ago. Wow. That's phenomenal. All right. Tanvira, you want to pull your question first? All right. I'm going to pull my questions from my Pyrex cup. It's a measuring Mm. jar. Uh, Also, the reason we want Pyrex to sponsor our podcast for some reason. Really quality jars and containers and measuring cups. Yeah. Yeah. No expense. Yeah. Yeah. No expense was spared on this. Yeah. I was actually say, I'm going to say this was a very low budget podcast, but I think no, we spent a quite a, quite a lot of money on this. So you really up the ante with the Pyrex drawing cup. Yep. <laughs> All right. So our first question to you is: If you could have any job in the world that is not podcasting, what would that be, and why? Ooh. Oh, such a good, such a good question. Uh, well. I used to, the, the job that I had for the, the longest time in my life was uh, teaching gymnastics at a school called the Little Gym of Brooklyn Heights uh, in, 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 in Brooklyn, obviously, uh, in Cobble <laughs> Hill. And uh, it's weird. So I guess it, like that would be the other job. I, I don't know if I wanted it to be my full-time job because like I'm getting older and creakier and things like that. But I just <laughs> loved, loved, loved teaching developmental motor skills to little ones and just like seeing, you know, just tummy time turn to crawling, turn to walking, uh-huh. turn to like, you know, and I was there for over five years. So that, so that became like kids, you know, flipping over bars and doing like back, to, you know, and not, you know, not backed up from, <laughs> from non crawler in five years, but uh, you know, just between the variety of students I taught, I got to see like all the developmental ranges and, I honestly, I miss that so much, just the the socialness of it. And, you know, I, having my own kid is like, it's like, it's like almost as good. So, you know. <laughs> just have oh, enough. Okay. You can have a small gymnastic team. It'd be great. <laughs> yes. I just want, I just want a full team again. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> That's just to tell your wife. That's all we need to do. Just get like, yeah, care, we could do like, do like 11 more kids, right? That's like no big right. deal. Super uh, easy. Do you, do you want to cut this podcast short? You can just go get started. <laughs> like, you can do that. Oh, face. I'm going to pull my question out of my magic red hat. And I apparently put a font size of nine. So let me try to read this without my glasses. Ooh. Uh, so you have odds on your pod, eh, odds, ads, <laughs> sorry, ads on your podcast. Have you ever been approached by an ad company with something that you would think is inappropriate for your for your listenership? Oh gosh, constantly. Yes, I I spent. I mean, the thing is, like, I don't have a lot of ads. I mean, I have one company that is that I'm very, very grateful to anchor because they have been advertising for months now regularly. And that's the first time in my life that that has happened with this show in, in you know, over four years, but no, I get like CBD oil. Like they, they're always, <laughs> you know, and like, and like, like hard, hard news outlets and just like grown up, pop- like people that are obviously just like sending out emails. To a, yeah. Just, just spamming. And they're like, yeah, you want to do this? And I, no, Thank you. I I I don't need to uh, have lube on my show uh, for children. Thanks. That's how they got here. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's funny because you have you have a what is the promo you do with pirate the PD the PD the pirate? My daughter can say that verbatim. By the way. Wow. Like, okay. I was like, who is this? She's like, mom. Let me finish this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Tim here. What you got? All right. Let's go. Again, I need to show this every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, a simple one. Favorite food. Ooh, favorite food. Uh, dessert or or both. Both entree and dessert. Okay. Okay. So 
entree ish is a is a torta like um yeah just a really stacked torta I, I mostly don't eat meat anymore but like that's like the exception that i will make uh unless i can find a place that has like a good vegetarian option but most most like classic mexican places don't have a vegetarian option so yes. that's the one time where i'll be like okay give me the real <laughs> deal uh, and then my then my favorite dessert is baklava. Uh, it's got to be like really crispy and flaky. I grew up with uh, a, a Greek neighbor who made the most phenomenal baklava. And it took me literally seven years in L.A. to find a place that came anywhere wow. near her baklava as far as quality wow. goes. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That was so, for the, so for the torta, is it, is it the uh, carne asada that you have in there? Uh, I I now go uh, carnitas because it's just a little bit easier on my stomach. Like, mm -hmm. at the, at the, especially like since I don't eat a lot of meat, like it has, I can't have a meat that has like tons of stuff in it or is yeah. really super fatty. So it's like a yeah. leaner, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, good. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I have All a right. follow up. What's the food that you absolutely hate or dislike? Let's use the word dislike. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> um. Gosh, I don't. You know, I, I, I'm, I really, I like so many foods, uh, like but like, so here's, here's the thing is that I am also mostly gluten free. I have like a lot of stomach issues, so I, we don't even need to get into all that. So basically my least favorite food is gluten free bread. I can't, there's just no, there's just no good gluten free bread in the world. Or like you might find some. So you buy a loaf of it, but because it goes bad so fast, you have to freeze it and then you thaw it out and then you get like a soggy piece of bread, no matter how yeah. delicate you are with the defrost <laughs> and the toasting and everything. It just, oh, it's either soggy or burnt. So yeah, gluten-free bread is the worst. Yeah, this is this is don't better, recommend. better than gluten-free bread, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> paper, paper, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. paper. Yeah, I should have a yeah. I should have just like like a vegetarian torta wrapped in paper. Uh, <laughs> there you go. It's a dream meal right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is my question? Ooh, worst email or feedback you've ever received from a listener? Oh, uh, I mean that happens like once a month where it'll just be like <laughs> this show is bad you should stop making it bad show like <laughs> I, yeah, you know, that's like, constructive yeah yeah no i mean largely uh, reviews like that you know are usually from children who you know may, they might be angry for their own reasons or yeah. you know honestly i've made like a hundred 84 episodes there are bad ones in there <laughs> like i can't i can't i'm putting them out every week i want them all to be good i try but like i don't have a team of writers i'm improvising most of this like it's so i'm like okay yeah you you got me that that was bad <laughs> do you have do you have a moment where you just recorded an episode and you're like that'll do oh i mean yeah i've had moments where i've recorded an episode and been like I'm throwing this out and no one's ever going to hear it. Uh, that has happened several times. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, like, we're just going to repeat that last week's episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, no, but then when it, if it's like, if it's like Friday and I need to post an episode on Monday and I already ran a rerun last week, I'm like, okay. yeah, this is it. This is what it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I love, cause you have a character, uh, Jay of cat. With mm has the accent of JF Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. So mm -hmm. my daughter does not know John F. Kennedy, but she has a perfect accent. So she's ready. <laughs> so when she learns about him, she's going to nail that. So I, yeah, that's pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Training the next generation of like <laughs> bad Boston accents. Ooh, it's my duty as a Boston, a former Bostonian. Yeah. That, if that is your duty. Mary, if your kid does stand up, I want to listen to that accent. That would be fun. <laughs> that would be really fun. It's it's the best. It's my favorite character, by the way, because I'm a cat person, obviously, as you can tell. But uh, yeah, J.R. Cat's the best one. I'm like, that is the attitude cat I need in my life. Like, I imagine him like more sassy, though. More sassy. He, he's he's sassy. Yeah, sometimes I have to like tone him back on the show because I think the real <laughs> JF cat would be even meaner than he, than he is on the podcast. Yes. He's always like learning lessons and stuff rather than just like, being like, get out of my face or I'll scratch you where the sun don't shine or, you know. Yeah. Like, I, want him to, I want him to be, he's going to be like that dick cat that's just like knocking shit over during the middle of an episode. Like yeah. you're not even involved JF, JF cat. Why are you even here? 
Fuck you. That, that is my that is my favorite bit of his. Is just you know he just knocks over, especially in a magical world where you can just like knock something over and like trigger the apocalypse. Whoops! <laughs> Sorry, you're all zombies now. <laughs> exactly. All right, all right Mr. Pirate. Oh. Yeah. Halloween best Halloween costume. Uh, my first year of college. A buddy of mine, actually second year, so it's even sadder. My buddy and I went, it was like Lord of the Rings was, you know, in full swing. So, and his name was Sam. And I had very, I have very wide, hairy feet. So we went as uh, Sam, Samwise and Frodo. And we had like the walking staffs and it was really good. Like we, it was just kind of an organic costume, but the, but the best part and the worst part was that we actually walked around Boston barefoot oh. all night. Uh, wow. and we, and we went trick or treating, uh, in Brookline where, where like they give out whole bars because like that, and people were like, aren't you a little too old? And we were like, yes. <laughs> <Trick or Thanks. treat. laughs> this is part of my education. Thank you. <laughs> that is phenomenal. So you, so you didn't have to wear prosthetics for your feet. No, no, my feet are naturally very wide, very hairy. And because I grew up near the beach, uh, very, very tough, very resilient. Um, Sam eventually, you know, I think he might have had to put on shoes at some point. Uh, sorry, Sam, if you're listening and only to sell you out. Uh, or maybe he didn't. Maybe that's just my memory because I like want to be cooler than than Sam. And it's not it's just not possible because he's a cool for, guy for the purposes of this podcast he was the whip and put shoes on so we're gonna go with that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> because he's not yeah. here <laughs> Make your heart out so yeah you failed <laughs> Ooh, okay what are three things you would bring on a deserted island um mm, okay i mean we know your family we know your family i'm talking about three materialistic things we're being non-sappy yeah 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 <laughs> no no i mean i want to i want to like cheat and say like solar powered charger uh okay cord and cell phone <laughs> um, it's really just one thing with accessories <laughs> yeah without well that way i can use it you know uh <laughs> so you can uber out of that <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna be like i'm gonna be like oh this is so bad all right uh yeah, yeah, ramon use. ramon no i bought i bought the desert island you got a boat <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I just want to see the Yelp review after you leave that island. Yeah. <laughs> like there's nobody else there. Don't go. Zero stars. <laughs> yeah. I might give it like a half star just because like, uh, you know, sun, sunshine is nice. Like for, yeah. 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 for some that can tan. Yes. Ten beer. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's I, overrated. I can't. <laughs> I'm, Me either. I turn into a lobster and I am full blooded Mexican, Eric, and I still turn into a lobster. So I feel your pain. Yeah, my mother's side is full blooded Italian, and I just know I the, but the the Irish I have the curse. Um, ah. I, yeah, can't get any sun. I die. That works. <laughs> All right, Mister Pirates. Um. Oh, that's what you've been calling me, Mister Pirate. <laughs> you know, I was hearing I was hearing pirate too. Were you hearing me pirate? Too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Wait, like, what? When did Tenvir become a pirate? Is this some bit I'm missing out on? <laughs> it could be. Like, it could be imposed. <laughs> I was like, that's never been my nickname. I don't know where she got that from, but Mr. Pyrex, all right. That's, that's Mr. Fine. Pyrex, okay. Nice. Speaking of characters, uh, the worst character you created that you had to scrap or just throw away at some point? Oh, I think it was, uh, I'm, uh, I think it was Mr. Mock. He was like supposed to be Mr. Spock. This was in like a, a sci-fi episode really early on when like the microphone was still like super rough. And I was just, I was just throwing stuff against the wall and saw what sticks. And like most, most of the characters, you know, a week or two later, once the show got some, some feedback, I'd be getting questions about that character. Just never heard a thing about Mr. Mock. And he was kind of mean spirited, you know, his, mm -hmm. his name was Mr. Mock. It was, he was actively making fun of people on a children's podcast. His whole shtick was making people feel bad about themselves. He was basically a bully uh, who was like on the good guys team. It was, it was not, it was, it did not work for a number of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I, I want Mr. Mock to mock us. Yeah. Well, that's the, the other problem is that I wasn't, he wasn't all that clever and I don't have a Spock impersonation <laughs> at all. So he was just like, Captain Kira, you're dumb. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. I probably tried harder than that in the moment, 
but that's that's, <laughs> that's how my memory makes that episode sound. That's funny. Do you think you think you would ever unshelve that for like a, like an anti bullying episode or something along those lines or? He, maybe yeah he they always, all the villains in what if world if they stick around long enough eventually learn a lesson and become a little less yeah. villainous you know uh so so maybe i've i've actually did just recently get a question about that episode after you know four and a half mm. years so. oh, wow. maybe he'll come back no <laughs> no he <won't. laughs> no, <you won't. laughs> You can just say it. We can take it. We can take it. Uh, ooh, have you ever had a guest refuse to do a show? You know, from time to time, you do have other great podcasters on your show. Have you ever had someone that you really wanted, but they just either didn't answer or just said no? Oh, I mean, yeah, constantly. I uh, <laughs> I, do, I I reach out to people way above my league all the time. I mean, that's, that's just what we do. We're podcasters. We're just like, we're just like, hey, come on my show. Because the thing is that sometimes they say yes. And you're like, <laughs> you're like what? Are, really? My, on me? You're going to foreshow me to do? Okay, great. And then, uh, but no, like recently I was like, hey, Matthew McConaughey, you just started uh, Hank the Dog children's yes. podcast. So like, I did, I did a children's podcast, you know, so just whatever. Come on. It's like, <laughs> you could yes. do my show. <laughs> it's just yes. silence. Yeah. Silence is the typical response yeah we're, we're familiar with that yeah. we send probably about 20 to 40 emails a week so i told i told my husband i've got I've heard so many got so many rejection emails i feel like i'm dating again like this is just very <laughs> it's very clear that people are I not going to be on our show. we have all worked in comedy like rejection is second nature to <laughs> yes. this you know yeah. it's just, I, I applaud you for doing 20 to 40 a week like i don't have the energy for it anymore but also it's fortunately it's not like an inter like i don't real i don't have yeah. to have the guest right. uh yeah. but i especially since the pandemic i've gotten like way lazier about it you think it would be the other way around because i love talking to people i just am like no i don't know i can't yeah. i can't bring myself to do it some days i enjoy i do enjoy when we do get a no that it's a no from especially from a big celebrity that it's when we get a no back i'm like oh, we got a no from dan Aykroyd. guys shut up this is fucking great <laughs> Like that moment she is actually like, sends me a text. <laughs> she says, send me a text saying I got some good news. I'm like, what? She's like, we got a no. I'm like, why? But it was from Dan Aykroyd's agent. It's awesome. Like they they responded to us. Like they didn't even have to. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a please die from Tom Hanks. Okay, I'm, oh I am God. printing this email. <laughs> yeah, it's going on the board. Yeah, no, we've gotten a lot of big names. Their agents did respond and tell us no. So I feel like we're we're looking in the right direction. Just you know, you know, too yeah. far above our feet. You gotta be hungry. No, you gotta be hungry. I applaud you for it. Keep keep doing it. It's that's that's great. I and if I. We should... don't have a guest. We don't have a show. So yeah, right. yeah. yeah. It's gonna just be oh. sad at that point. It's be me and Tambir just crying into our microphones. That, that, would, that wouldn't be that, that sad. That sounds like good listening. Uh, <laughs> you're funny. Fill, we can fill this with some wine, and it'll be a great podcast. <laughs> Wine and tears goes down smooth. Oh, by That's the way, my childhood gonna... all over again. <laughs> I'm going to edit out the 20 to 40 emails. I don't want people to know that. Oh, that we work hard. <laughs> yeah. We work yeah. hard for our show. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's just perfectly natural, easy. Oh, yeah. They email me. Yeah. They email me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know what? They do request me. They hit me up on Facebook and Instagram all the time. Yeah. yeah. yeah I yeah. passed on Oprah last week. I was just too busy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. We just, we'll just bleep it out, Tamir. It'll be great. Keep guessing. <laughs> Keep guessing. <laughs> all right. Next question. Best guilty pleasure. Oh, gosh. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, I know I know. Mary ha has a kid. Tamir, do you have a kid? It's oh, God, no. Well, it because like that's when guilty pleasures kind of like evaporate a little bit. Like you, <laughs> like that's I fair. used to, I used to have a guilty pleasure of like I don't know. I'd like like once a month, I'd like stay up way too late playing video games, mm -hmm. um, and I just like can't. It has happened one time in this in the whole pandemic. And uh, oh wait, no, I have a good one. I have a good one. Dungeons and Dragons. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Are you playing over Zoom now? Playing over, playing over, uh, roll 20, uh, sponsor my show, sponsor my show. <laughs> uh, roll 20. No, but it's, it's like legit. Cause it's, it's an interface like this, but you know, your faces are really small and then it's just like battle map characters, yeah. rolling dice. You can like put 
cheesy like like tinny like uh music that they make and you can insert it into your into your oh it's really so dorky and so fun and i think i would have gone crazy without i i we first started a weekly D D game and we've played uh 20 we've had we're on session number 22 now since the oh. pandemic started we've missed oh, a couple wow. of weeks but like it's been a lifesaver yeah that's cool how, how old is your little one uh he just turned one year oh okay i will tell you once i hit three or four life starts resorting back to normal like you have a moment to actually like have late nights again i'm just gonna tell you, there oh. is light at the end of the tunnel oh thank so, you but thank if you, you have another one you're screwed yeah, <laughs> no, that's happening. So we're just gonna wait. We're just gonna wait. All right. So like five five years from now, five years from probably. now. Yeah, probably. If, if the if number two comes really soon, otherwise, you know, six or seven. <sighs> okay, I'll be in my forties. All right. Yeah, that was good. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Three times. It just yeah. exists out there. No, and it's it's so worth it. It's so worth it. We love our children. Obviously, it's like it's. But uh, yeah, no. Some you know, free time would yeah. be nice. Yeah, it's nice to actually you know be an individual again like so like tabby and i like we go out and we do mics you know three four when we pre-covid it was probably four to five nights a week so wow. it was like you know work home going out and i see my kid going home and she's like oh you're gonna go tell jokes i got a joke for you i'm like okay and then it's like so it was so it, it gets crazy but the older they get like they get like it becomes more reasonable like they understand you know yeah yeah so that that is, a bit. that's nice that's nice all right well you know life we'll goals see. <laughs> We'll see. And if it doesn't happen, whoops. Uh, so what superpower would you want? Mm, I mean, it just feels like cheating to say teleportation. Uh, like, I just feel like it's the most, you could just do too much with it. But like, I, uh, it's also because I live across the country from my, from the rest of my family. So it'd be nice to like pop in and visit. And then I could like, just like, just like see where just I could go to like every continent in a day and, you know, and just kind of do cool stuff. Maybe I could also travel in time because of space time continuum, you know, so it's like, just roll it all <laughs> in. A possible quantum leap episode thrown in there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, I butterfly affect myself. It's terrible. I wish I'd never gotten this superpower. Uh, and then I'm like, I need to get back to that moment in that interview and give a different answer. That's the only way. Yeah. See, but I think teleportation, so, I wonder if it would become like tortoise and the hare would be like, eh, I could go, but I'm just gonna sit on the couch. Oh, that's true too. I'd be like, why I'm, walk anywhere? Like, like I no, I'm not gonna take my son on a walk. I'm gonna teleport oh, with him. I'd be like, oh no, now he's growing out of my side. This is <laughs> this really I should have watched the fly before I <laughs> this. Between flying and being invisible. That's the mm. most common question asked. Would would you still stick to teleportation or be invisible? Oh, 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 oh see, so a teleportation or invisibility? Oh gosh. Yeah, I mean, like I would love to try invisibility, but I think at the end of the day, it's just the creepiest superpower. You know, <laughs> like it's just it's just the mean superpower. Like, oh, I want to find out what my friends are saying about me behind my back. I wanna like do super illegal voyeuristic stuff like i don't you know i mean granted i guess teleportation you could do a lot of crime with with any superpower but invisibility just feels really really just like <laughs> <laughs> if the voice has caught nothing yes <laughs> There's, don't worry no just keep going just just keep doing what you're doing it's fine no one's here like, I, it's like no. yeah. now, now that you say that that does kind of come off really creepy so yeah maybe that won't be a character on the show and I've got the, <laughs> I've got the perfect question for that if you could commit one crime <laughs> and no one would know what would that be oh no oh no I can't I can't answer this we I let it this. I promise we let it we won't all right we will edit it <laughs> I mean I would I list I would just you know, I, I would just kind of like want to uh, imprison the entire Trump administration, you know, <laughs> like just just like send them to like a prison, like like no, like one of their own, like, like really bad like cages, prison. Like, like maybe yeah, just, be like, just be like, like, you're just like going to Gitmo. I'm sorry. You like <laughs> you, you hate you hate people. You obviously don't like 
people unless maybe they're extremely rich and and i don't you you're you know just contributing to so much despair and death so i think it's a fair punishment i don't think that's a crime i think that's helping humanity so i think right but it is but it is it is an extrajudicial and imprisoning which you know so so (laughs) yeah it would give me more joy than I think anything else I can imagine criminally. Yeah. So based on the election results, we may or may not release this episode. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I was like, I can't say this because, like, what? Like, Big Brother, we're all gonna. They're gonna be like, oh, send me to Gitmo, will ya? Because that's how they all talk. And uh, <laughs> I hate to tell you, Eric, that they already knew that about you. They didn't need this podcast for them to figure it out. <laughs> That's probably true. Yeah, no, I'm definitely a bleeding heart liberal. That comes across pretty hard on the show. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Todd, the FBI guy, is listening to this podcast. Is not going to care. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, no, he's not going to do anything. What is? It? Look at him. He's five foot six. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. Worst advice you ever gave a fan? Worst advice I ever gave a fan. I mean, like, if you said something, you're like, oh, maybe I should never told that kid that. It's just, I I wish I had a better answer to that. But the fact of the matter is, is that like, I don't talk to my fans. <laughs> they don't, I, you know, it's not an adult podcast. Like they send me questions and I specifically do not respond unless like their parent emails me because I'm not going to be that creepy dude who's like, <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, what's that? No, no. Tell me, what's that bully's name? Okay, okay. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go in. You're going to say, you're going to say, Frank, I've had it. And then, then, you, then you just deck him. Uh, no, I wouldn't. I would. Also, also, that would not be in my advice. But like. Uh, That'd but, be my advice, yeah. <laughs> but. But yeah, I don't. I don't get to give advice to to my fans. It's, it's a very ready, like. Do, do people not hear you on this? Like, like if you're in a store and have you ever had a kid like, oh, that's a Mr. Eric on the show? Like, no, what? No, I, uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm not. No, I'm a podcaster. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm very flattered that you think that anyone would ever recognize me. But I, but I, but I give you the benefit of the doubt, Eric. Jeez, you're killing me here. <laughs> I, I guarantee you, my kid will pick you out in a crowd. Okay, well, that yes. would be that would be wonderful uh, if that ever happened, and I would try not to give bad advice. But so far, it just hasn't. Okay, okay, good to know. That was a test. I- I can imagine Mary, your kid, just going to a store, just listening to everyone. No, not Eric. Not Eric. <laughs> Eric. If I told her he was in the store, and you had to find him. I guarantee you, she'd find him. <laughs> or she'd just like pull over the nearest Kennedy and be like, "This is, this is him, right?" Yeah, there's a lot of Kennedys in Texas, so it'd be really hard for her. To <laughs> so many Kennedys, you know. Property is so really good out there now. Uh, <laughs> well, we got Joe Rogan, so that's our Kennedy, apparently. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Kennedy of podcasting, oh, Joe true. Rogan, right? We'll no. do our podcast. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> oh. You got it? Did you get a no from Joe Rogan? Uh, no, I told him a no. I told him I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, you told him. Yeah. Listen, listen, I Joe. I didn't work for us. <laughs> Can I call you Joe? I'm gonna call you Joe. I'm just yeah. You just honestly, you just don't walk that liberal line like you should. You know, you you, you give the conservatives too much of a voice so i don't want you on my show yeah sorry yeah yeah well the, the week just didn't work out for us we were busy tanning so yeah <laughs> yeah it's not even a good reason <laughs> just wasn't- my last question to you uh what job you ever had probably the more like embarrassing job i i've had was uh was being a, a cutco salesman vector marketing it's it's a pyramid scheme Uh and i was i was like one tier above the bottom of the pyramid which means i was just getting to the point where i was taking advantage of other people rather than just strictly being taken advantage of (laughs) uh oh gosh so you're just you're selling cutlery and like kitchenware and i it was in it was in new york it was like my first like real job after being a waiter all through high school and college and uh Gosh, I sold a lot of knives to a lot of people who probably didn't need them. The thing is, I still have all the knives. They're great knives, but it's just like, who wants? She was like, I got you. Got to like cold call someone who bought a knife like five years ago in Manhattan and be like, hey, you want me to sharpen your knife? And then you go to their house and you sharpen their knives, and then you try to sell them more knives. 
Oh. Oh, it was so shitty. Which is weird because you just sharpened that knife. Yeah, you just, they're like, they're like, wait, these work good now. I'm like, yeah, no, but you need this other one. And I mean, they're, granted, there are people, great people I met there, whatever, do it for a living, but like, no, I don't know. And I like, I gave myself a scar on like my first week on like this, my index finger. I just like, I was sharpening it, just cut right into it. And I was like, no, I'm fine. That's, it just happens. It has <laughs> part of the job, part of the job. But no, I've been doing this for a while. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> 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 what, what if they wanted to sponsor your show? If, if, if uh, Cutco wanted to sponsor my show, they, they wouldn't. Cause they, cause they, cause it's a pyramid scheme. Like they, they don't, they don't advertise they manipulate what if they went legit and then they were like you know what let's make it right eric listen if they go legit if if they're not like trying to get uh, you know teenagers to sell like ten thousand dollars worth of cutlery to their family uh then yes come on my show (laughs) and i I, look i love your stuff i use it every day so go ahead advertise on my show and i will be like hey vectors really turned a corner uh (laughs) They're not a pyramid scheme anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to go on your show. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably uh, never. So that actually goes, I don't know how that ties in, but I'm going to say it ties in a while to this one. Uh, do yeah, you good think transition. The, <laughs> <laughs> do you think the podcast industry is run by the mob? Do, what? Who says this? Is this a I thing? say that. Well, I, I, because of the way it really, like, you know, who you know, how you get into it. Like the ones that some of these podcasts that take off, it's like, it makes no sense why some of them take off and why others don't. Also, so I... I have a theory that's run by the mob. So first off, I think that was a great transition, you know, because we were just talking about bad jobs and now like, you know, this is podcasting <laughs> is the worst job of, of all jobs. We all know this. Like I love, yeah. I love my job, but I have had better paying jobs. Uh, <laughs> so um, the run by the mob, that is, that is new to me. If, especially, I like the idea if like, the, especially if with kids podcasting, if there's, if there's a mob and, and they're just like, Underground yeah, belly. should we, should we let Eric in? You know, people, some people listen to this podcast. Nah, nah, he's not mean <laughs> enough. He doesn't have the killer instinct. He's got knives. <laughs> he's got knives. <laughs> wait, wait, he sold, he sold knives. Okay. Okay. Give him a chance. Give him a chance. Uh, I <laughs> podcasting is really um it is really feels a little insular like towards the top though uh so yeah I don't know like just talking you know real talk for a second like it's, yeah. there, there are there are like you know it's just always like another big network that comes in and makes a podcast or like a big a big actor that's just like yeah okay people are doing this podcasting thing I'm going to, I don't need any more money, but like I'm bored. So I'm going to like do a podcast now and and it'll, it'll be better produced than yours. It'll have a better staff than yours. I'll have to spend less time on it than you do. And it's going to be more successful immediately. And like that happens all the time in in, in every genre of podcasting. And, and that is that whether that's a mob or not, it is, it is a frustrating thing. It's just like, we're getting, they're getting to that point in popularity where people come in and you know that now the celebrities are doing it yeah i mean matthew mcconaughey with has a kid podcast now yeah. rob Lowe. right that's now that's good. my thing right now rob Lowe, you don't need a podcast rob Lowe. <laughs> yeah you don't need one no i know i know and and the thing is they are good though like i like i've listened to hang the dog it's a it's a great show and i'm like yeah i, I totally have nothing bad to say about that and i talk to them like i know those people they're they're wonderful, hardworking people. So like good, it's like, I'm glad that jobs are happening from this. Um, but it's like, oh, it does it, you know, there's a part every time there's a another big new show, the people who are just barely scraping by with their podcast job, it just gets a little harder for us is all. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Who is a dream guest that you want want on the show? My dream guest. Whoa. I have, I've never, that's such a great question. I wish I uh, was prepared for it. <laughs> um, but you know, um, I'd probably I'd probably say Andy Daly. Uh, Ooh, okay. You know, yeah, he's he's a he's a wonderful improviser and podcaster. And we also have a poster of his pilot podcast project, um, which he like just does a. a it, it was only like ten episodes, and then he did a second season. But he he each episode he's a different character doing a different like pilot uh podcast pilot that's cool and 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 callum had just started pointing he's a he's a year old and 
uh, he, so he just, uh, now he just points at it every morning. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's Andy Daly. He's the guy who's funnier than your dad. He's like way <laughs> funnier and more talented than your dad. Uh, you should worship him. And he just like <laughs> stares at him pointing. So like, it'd be, it'd be pretty cool. It'd be, it'd be a real coup to have a uh, person like that on the show. That's cool. Uh, well, that leads into my second to last question. Uh, do you have a background in sketch or improv? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I did um, through, through college. I did, we had like a residency at uh, Remington's restaurant um, the, the, and the comedy studio and, uh, just um we did we did sketch comedy for ages um and a, a lot of the original what if world characters are based off of characters that were you know probably more uh, <laughs> colorful <laughs> characters in my sketch in my sketches um and and then and then improv i did improv all through my years in new york and then I did right up through la and even even after starting the podcast i still do it now and then just not so much since the pandemic obviously it's harder i i tried i joined i tried to hop in on an online one once and it just wasn't like uh i don't know it was it was it wasn't quite the same but it's not the same yeah 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 but i i do i do like i love sketch i love improv i feel like anyone who wants to do any of those or stand up of course like should just should just like yeah just give it a go and you know it's you know Gets have you yeah. good at handling rejection. <laughs> <laughs> Very you, good at it. <laughs> have you done stand up? I've I've done stand up. Um, <clears throat> I, the thing is, I was I was always really precious about it, which is you can't be. You know, you have to grind it to get really good. So, like, I would develop a set for like a for like a month or whatever, and then like do it a couple of times and be like, great. And then and then you know, I just go back to the grind of work and sketch comedy and like sketches you turn, you churn out. And so I never, it never really like took off. It, well, mostly my, my stand up, as you might imagine was very, very character driven. So I'd just be like oh. nervous guy with cards, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It, it was, I, I always had a really, really dumb bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that, that could definitely work. Did you find other comics that like, could, you could work with like in the sketch world? Like that's kind of what we see uh, over yeah. here is that most of the time it's easy to transition to doing sketches with comics and because they have the same kind of thought process. Oh, totally. I mean, that's uh, some of the guys I met doing stand up and sketch in Boston are still my friends today. Uh, and I occasionally work with and Don, Don Diego specifically is like my, my best friend. We moved out here together. Uh, and he, he's a writer now. And like, we, we still try to write stuff together now and then. And yeah, Christian Lynch and we, a lot, a lot of, a lot of people who are like doing really great now who I should probably reach out to make them come on my show. Yeah. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> Untapped market right here, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? Blowing it. Well, that's uh, a great way for them to work out characters too. I mean, granted, they're doing yeah. it within a kid's frame, but they can yeah. work out how the what you know what's the motivation for characters and all that kind of can be done. You know, it gives a it's an avenue. Yeah, and they still honestly, it, it is weird. Like I clean up the characters one hundred percent, but the cadence is almost always the same. Like the bits and the cadence yeah. are so similar, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't like. I know people frown upon stuff that's like that's for kids because it's not i don't know uh, challenging enough or whatever but like i don't know i i find it i find it really fulfilling and and they and like i just i'm just like no i'm just not swearing that's like it's like yeah. basically the difference is i i don't swear and and i you know i try not to really 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 hover on the deep dark stuff but i still address it you yeah. know like there's still loss and pain and things like that i'm just like i'm just not spending a lot of time there it's like it's like a it's like a sitcom you know you just kind of yeah. you skim over it you tell your lesson you, you try to move on well your stories are very interesting and engaging like uh, i mentioned off camera that my you know my daughters listen to your entire you know um catalog three times we've been in the car and i'll get into the story and then we'll get where we're going and i was like oh crap i gotta stop I'm like well let me finish this episode my daughter would say uh mom i'll just tell you how it ends we can go into the restaurant i'm like okay like because i just want to know how it ends because that's where i'm at like i need to know at the end of the story because i'm engaged and i'm involved so it's not i mean it does transition very well especially like for adults that have to listen to kid stuff quite often it's not yeah. as it doesn't talk down to children like i feel like it really meets them and kind of makes them think think through things a little bit better instead of talking at them or down to them. That's a huge difference on quality of, of children's uh, any entertainment. 
Thank you. That, I mean, that is, that's always been my goal from, you know, my years as, uh, as a teacher and an educator is just, yeah, it, not to talk down to them and try to make it entertaining for them. And, and, you know, just because of the improv and the sketch and, and, and stand up experience, I, I do my best to have little Easter eggs for grown ups and, and, you know, occasionally have a joke that might go over a kid's head, but <laughs> yeah. be enjoyed by someone else. Yeah. That's fair. All right. So we're at to our last question. This is a question we ask every <laughs> guest we have. Mm. All five of them. Um, when someone Googles you, what do you want your autocomplete to be? Oh, uh, so. Eric are, well, okay. Okay. Eric O'Keefe. Uh, coolest kids podcaster. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> nice nice because that still means i'm like i mean king of king of the nerds what is that that's nothing uh, it's <laughs> hey it's still a king okay yeah yeah prince harry's I, never gonna be able to say that so <laughs> i thought you were gonna bring the knives back in like Eric oh, knives. <laughs> wait wait can, knife you, you take that? can i and i'll just i'll just say something really clever about knives now uh yeah callbacks callbacks oh i blew it oh the one chance <laughs> well we really appreciate you taking the time and and making and making uh your schedule available for us this has been a phenomenal interview we are super thrilled to have have you on the show Thank you. Honestly, it's just wonderful to talk to people in, in the business and like just lighthearted, funny people. I, it's like I don't get the chance to to do this often enough. So thank you for reaching out to me. And I gosh, this is this is a blast. Yeah. yeah. Well, that is a lot of fun, right? Yes, it was so much fun. Oh, I love a new format. I really do. And I think it worked great this time. I agree. I mean, we got to learn a lot more about our guests than we normally do. So, you know, who knew that loop companies wanted to uh, talk to kids? Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. Well, the CBD oil, yeah, that's that makes sense. But loop, probably not. Right. <laughs> probably not. All right. That's our show for this week. As always, please like and subscribe. Uh, if you really, really, really like it, please share it with your friends, families, and enemies on social media. We would love to see that. As always, we appreciate you watching. I'm Mary Picarazzi. And I'm Tanvir Arora. Till next time.